Now we can go ahead and increase the complexity of the simulation. So what we can do is now I can go back to the first tab that was there where I created the mesh and the section properties. Now I can introduce um, virtual bolts as explained before and then I can also introduce contact. So, if, but for virtual bolts, what I have to do before I introduce virtual bolts, I have to delete the existing tie connection that was created. So to do that, you can go into the manager right here. You can either deactivate the tie by uh, clicking the check, uh, toggling it off, or you can actually remove it by clicking on delete. So in this case, I'm just going to delete it so that we have no uh, manager, uh, we have no tie connections. And close it. Now we can click on virtual bolts right here. Uh, what virtual bolts do is uh, you have to select uh, two supports between which the bolt, virtual bolt will be created. So it is going to end up creating a coupling uh, for both the selected faces. It's going to create two individual couplings for both selected faces. And then it is going to uh, join the, the reference points of the two couplings with a connector element. That is basically what virtual bolts do. Uh, so here in this case for support one uh, we can select this face uh, so this hole of the backboard and we can rotate the model and for support two we can select this face as you can see um, a virtual bolt is now going to be created between the between the two regions click OK so uh, now I've created all the four uh, four virtual bolts and you can see that in the modeling manager we have four virtual bolts one two three and four um, uh, from the modeling manager now I can either hide or show all these virtual bolts so I'm just going to hide all these uh, sorry I'm just going to hide all these virtual bolts from display for the time being um, so the next step right now is to uh, so I've deleted the tie connections and now we have as you can see we have four virtual bolts connection mesh one two three and four in the tree um, so I'm just going to close all these things like minimize all these things the next step is to go back into the simulation and now we're going to increase the complexity a little bit so I, I should uh, from the uh, fixed area of the action bar you can go sorry uh, not the fixed area but from the action bar now you can go into the scenario tab so that now it switches back into the simulation now you can see that all the boundary conditions are all already been applied but now we're going to increase the complexity by introducing two steps two static steps now in since we have bolts now the first static step I'm planning to go and apply a pretension load to the bolts where it is assumed that the bolts are already tight and you know there is basically no slack between the two surfaces uh, that will be my first step and in the second step I would do the exact same condition right now where I would just apply a pressure and uh, we would simulate and oh also in the second step we would fix the bolt positions such that the bolts do not move after applying the load uh, so we have to fix the bolt positions in the second step so that the nodes really do not move anywhere so um, so in in this case I'm going to modify the uh, the step one uh, properties so I can go into simulation manager and I'm going to delete uh, the, the pressure load right now we can keep we can keep the clamp load as it we can keep the clamp restraint as it is now what we have to do is go into loads and you can see that there is a bolt force right here now I can go um, I can go into the simulation manager and uh, I can make all these visible now you can see that I can uh, for supports I can just go ahead and select all these different entities for bolt force and say I'm giving a magnitude of 500 newtons click OK so all my first step is going to do is just pre-tension the bolts now also in this analysis we would be introducing contact so go to the interac interactions tab of the action bar and then we can go and click on this contact detection tool right here this is a nice handy tool because it is it will basically detect any contact pairs within a certain search tolerance that you enter at the top so here I'm just going to give it like two millimeters and I'm going to say find surface pairs it has found one contact pair right here and I'm going to say okay 
and it's going to basically create a contact pair. So for the sake of simulations, I'm not going to apply any friction. I'm just going to go with frictionless contact since we have bolts. Um, it should be okay. Now, now, um, now we, we have to basically now create a second step is another static step and give the same pa parameters as before. Starting increment is 0.5. Click OK. Now in this static step, what I would do is um, before before I go, uh, I want to basically hide the mesh so that the, the rest of things are visible. Now in the second step, I would go into the restraints tab. And as mentioned before, I need to fix the position of the bolts in the second step. So I can go into bolt restraint and basically click all the individual connections, all the bolt con connections, and click OK. So you can see that the glyphs have changed um, such that it's going to be restrained in the second step. And also, I am going to apply the, the pressure load at the same location as before. And click OK. Now, as you can see, this is all I would be doing. So this is just an extension of the previous analysis where we're making things a little more realistic. So if you want to toggle between steps, you can always click the drop down and change whatever step you want to. And then you can apply. So you can see that the glyphs have automatically disappeared, which means that that's not active in that step. And now it's active. The other way of finding out uh, what parameters are active in different steps is you can right click the viewport and select simulation manager you would basically see in the simulation tab, you would basically see uh, static step one, static step two, you'd see bold forces that are being applied. Now, I don't want the bold forces to be applied in the second step. Now, for that, what we have to do is we have to deactivate this in the second step. So right click this particular section and click deactivate. So now the bold force is applied in the first step. The bold restraint is applied in the second step. You're going to have contact in both the steps. You're going to have clamp in both the steps and you will have pressure in the second step as expected. So looks like my simulation is all set up. Now what, we, wh what I can do is go into the simulation simulate tab and click simulate. And we have the same parameters as before. You can click OK. Now the simulation will run and once it's complete, we can see the results. So it looks like this simulation is complete and uh, you can see that we have severe discontin uh, discontinuous iterations, which basically says that there is contact in the problem. So we can close the simulation status manager. And in the plots, um, we can go ahead and select von Mises. So uh, um, the results for uh, the step one is basically, it says that the von Mises um, stresses 886. And it also shows you certain contours near the uh, locations of the bolt where, where we define the virtual bolts. So that is consistent with how we have defined uh, the simulation entities. Now we can go to the top here and select static step two. And you can see that the magnitude is actually very much comparable to what we saw when we tied, the con uh, when we tied both the parts together. And we can also see that the deflection is also very much comparable. We can go to displacement and then check and we can see that the behavior is pretty consistent that this is the most uh, uh, this this is the part of the entire assembly that has the most deflection so that is very consistent that's great uh, since we now have contact in the problem can we see what the contact pressure is between the backboard and the hoop uh, sure we just go here so here I can just uh, drop down and change in the contact pressure and you can see that you can see that since this is the only interface where we have contact, only that is uh, basically highlighted with uh, different contours. Now, to basically visualize how the patch looks like, uh, we can go into the or we can just click on this particular uh, backboard, and then we can go and click on display groups. Now here, uh, basically, what what I'm doing is I'm selecting display group remove tool and now I can just go and click the backboard and it's going to take it away. Now as you can see that this is the uh, the contact pressure surface and since the since pressure has been applied over here it is uh, intended for this entire uh, 
rim part to basically deflect towards on the top which basically says that the bottom part over here will get more in contact with the uh, with the backboard and that is why we have um, a spike over here in the stresses in, in the contact pressure and now to to basically display all the parts you can click on restore all and it's going to bring back everything in display click okay and you can change it back into one mesis that's fantastic thank you so much akshay for walking me through these different scenarios and i look forward to going back to my desk and trying it on my own no problem laurie good luck thanks